Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Nice to see some different faces. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I want to, uh, for this morning's uh, thought of the week, let me set the mood. We've got to set the mood for this one. All right. <clears throat> it's early in the morning. The sun's just coming up. And you have that ground fog. You know how that goes. You've got that low-lying ground fog, and the sun's coming up, and it's pretty neat. <clears throat> and it's the day of Jesus' crucifixion. There is a high and a, there is a hush and a stillness around the high priest's home where Jesus has been taken. He has been interrogated and intimidated. They will put a crown of thorns upon his head and dress him in purple, which is an act of uh, mockery. Luke adds that when Jesus emerges from the house, Peter is in the courtyard. There is a fire going, and there are some people there, and they're warming themselves around the fire. And Luke says Jesus can see Peter. Now Peter is there warming himself, and all the others have fled, but Peter is there. And the servant girl is there, and she says, you are one of the disciples. And so we're going to pick up our story right there, and I've titled this the cock, the cock crows, and our and our verse our our uh, scripture is going to be Mark fourteen sixty six to seventy two. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also wast with Jesus of Nazareth? But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I, thou sayest. And he went out to the porch, and the cock crew. <clears throat> and a maid saw him again, and began to say to them that stood by, this is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after, they that stood by said again to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth thereunto. But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom you speak. And the second time the cock crew. And Peter called to mind the words that Jesus had said unto him, before the cock crows twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. Well, I think Peter would be haunted by this dark <coughs> episode for the, probably the rest of his life. But he was a mature veteran disciple. He was one of the twelve. He was called by Jesus. He had spent years with him and had heard him teach. He had seen astonishing miracles, and he had, he had watched Jesus close up. He sat with him at meals and had small talk with him around the table. He listened to matters that blew him away as Jesus taught and discipled him in private. In Matthew 16, 18, we read, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Jesus had picked Peter as the foremost apostle to take the church through Pentecost and beyond. <clears throat> what was about to happen had been foretold by Jesus. Jesus had told Peter the night before. It was just the night before. You would think that the words of Jesus would have come rushing into Peter's head. He really meant that he would die for Jesus. He was one of Jesus' disciples, and he loved him with all his heart. Peter's statement was full of pride rather than humility. He wasn't thinking about his own frailty or the power of Satan. If Peter could do that, don't you think that we could do the same? We are by no means equal to Peter. He is one of the great apostles. But think about who it was who denied Jesus. 
This was Peter. I think Peter denied Jesus in a cowardly kind of way. There are small lies and there are big lies, but this one was a whopper. It was as big as it gets. I don't know, I don't know him. I've never been with him. I'm not one of his disciples. What on earth happened to Peter's faith? Where was his reasoning? He was never going to see these people again. His denial seems so cowardly. Peter had been told to watch and pray. He had participated in the Lord's Supper just the night before, and still he denied Jesus. I don't think Peter would want us to excuse it. It was wrong. It was a failure, a willful failure on his part. Peter's actions during his denial were defiant. He never thought that he would, <clears throat> he would do what he did. I think Peter was in Satan's grip. In Luke twenty two thirty one, we read, <clears throat> Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you like wheat. Well, that day had come, and Satan was in the driver's seat, and Peter experienced the fear of man. It was pride and self-confidence that brought Peter down, and it was something he dwelt on a great deal. He said later in 1 Peter 5, 6, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. In the aftermath of denying Jesus, Peter remembered the words of Jesus. Those words must have grieved him terribly. The guilt must have been overwhelming. <clears throat> There's a verse in, in Micah uh, that I'd like to read in closing. And it says, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Yes, he fell but he would rise again. He was in darkness, but the Lord would give him light. This is the same promise the Lord gives to us today. We may and we do fall, but the Lord is there to pick us up, just like Peter. Thank you.